Hey, yeah, what's up? It's your boy, uh, Eons D. Um, just give a little quick tutorial on uh, how I work with samples, pretty much uh, slicing uh, samples and time stretching them in logic. Uh, this was a, a technique that I, I found uh, not too long ago. Uh, before that, I was using the EXS24 sampler, uh, which is another way to sample. Um, that was the the old way I used to sample. It's still a pretty pretty good way to sample. And basically, use the EXS24 uh, sampler here. And I got a lot of pre-loaded stuff, a lot of different samples. Basically, uh, it pretty much a lot of people that are familiar with sampling are pretty much familiar with. Uh, how something like the EXS24 works where you chop up different parts of a song and map it out to your keyboard and you press the keys on your keyboard to play back the samples and uh, and that's how you make a beat. Uh, but this is a different way to sample. Um, I've seen people sample using audio before but I haven't really seen anybody really expound on the, the time stretching capabilities and logic on YouTube or you know a lot of people asking me about this, uh, a lot of my friends that produce, so I decided to do a uh, tutorial on it. Uh, first thing is, um, I'm going to grab here, I'm going to go ahead and grab a, a, a song to sample. Uh, let me go down to my uh, samples from turntable file. And i uh, got a lot of audio files here. Um, there was one Barbara Streisand one I wanted to do. Let me see which one it was. Yeah, I like this one. Uh, I'm not going to import the tempo information. I don't really know too much about what that is. I'm not a I'm not a logic expert by any stretch of the word. Uh, I I just really started using logic about what eight to ten months ago, something like that. So uh, still learning a lot about logic, but um, have been able to make some pretty pretty decent beats in it so far. And uh, it's really uh, the, the sampling capability in logic is really kind of. Uh, uh, help my production out a lot and uh, basically what I do once is I grab once I grab my audio I set my snap to uh, samples and basically what that does is uh, you see I got the scissors tool here uh, basically what these two buttons here are is what you can allow your uh, your mouse or your touchpad to, to do and if you hold down command um, if you hold down command it'll select the scissors tool which I have here anything you select on this second uh, button here um, will you hold down command to access it it's kinda like a left click sort of thing and uh, kinda yeah left click tool is what's called and this first one is I'm used for my pointer tool and what I'm gonna do is uh, zoom in on the audio here it probably is a better quicker shorter way to zoom in again I'm not a logic wizard uh, I'm still using here the old-fashioned way to zoom in and uh, basically zoom in here on my audio and uh, most important thing about getting sam getting samples and putting them time stretching is, is finding the uh, uh, what is it, the one beat I don't know I don't know what it's called musically uh, I call it the downbeat or the one beat <laughs> whatever but basically where that kick would come in this audio doesn't have any drums as you can hear on this part that I want to sample uh, I, I don't know if it's I don't think it's recorded to a click track I don't think it's recorded to a click track so that's the reason why I want to time stretch it to get it right on beat and also to change the tempo of it to, to something a little faster something you would probably hear on a Kanye West type of joint so I want to sample this uh, on the uh, the one kick which I, I call it I could be some I could be totally screwing that up but you know whatever so I'm gonna play the track and I'm gonna find the the, the where the kick would come in if this had drums to it this is right there when that uh, piano comes in right here that's where drums would start and since I have my snap set the samples I can freely drag this here 
wherever I want. It won't line up to the grid. It goes to wherever I want it to go. So I'm going to start it right there from the beginning of the track. And I'm going to count like the, the beats so I can uh, count how many bars I want to use of this and I'll be able to time stretch it to the tempo that I want to select for this track. So I'm going to go ahead and count. And normally you can you can do a four count. You know, there's like four bars and a measure, something like that. Again, I'm not very musically, I don't have a lot of musical technical knowledge, whatever. <laughs> but uh, this is how I do it. So I'm going to start counting from here and try to get like a four bar loop. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And see, this one's kind of tricky, and I'm glad I got this one because it, it, the, the beat that comes back in is really subtle here. So you have to be really, really careful when you're slicing to make sure you get it right, and so it can be kind of, so it can be on beat when you uh, put drums to it or, or you know whatever. And so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, and I, what I did was Control Z that uh, that pretty much undoes what I what I last did. And I'm gonna start this track here. You hear the piano comes back in after she says, after she says life, that piano hit that comes back in, that is when a kick would come back in uh, if this had drums to it. Boom, right there. So let me get that part. I think, I think. Uh, now this one may be a little sloppy because again, there was no kick there to, to get it perfect. But whatever, this might work. We'll see. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now that's probably a little, a little off, but um, it might work with some drums once I uh, time stretch it. I might be able to get this a little better though. Uh, let me see here. I'm going to zoom in on this track. This can be, depending on the sample and the extent of the song you're sampling, uh, this could be really time consuming, but it's fun. I love doing it. I think I got it pretty good. I'm going to use that. We'll see how it works. And, uh, and now this is, the, this is the part here that's really important. Once I got this loop that I want to uh, time stretch, um, I set the tempo. Now, this song is pretty slow, so you, you want to make sure you don't set it too fast the tempo of your track uh, because again with any type of audio manipulation you're going to get artifacts and what that is is basically sound degradation uh, you're going to lose points quality wise so uh, I try to tend to be in the ballpark of the song tempo unless it's really slow like this is really slow couldn't really imagine rapping to it so it, you're going to hear little artifacts in the sample once I time stretch it but one of the things I like about the time stretching capabilities and logic is uh, the artifacts uh, sometimes are not even noticeable or they're minimal. And even with like really drastic time stretching, the artifacts can be hidden in a great mix. And uh, well, I mean, it may be programs out there that, that kills it or some, some hardware sampler that will kill this. But uh, this is just what I found. So I'm going to set the tempo to probably about like um, 82. I mean, that's still kind of fast. You're going to hear some artifacts, but um, that's fine. We're just trying to, this is for the sake of the tutorial. And now I'm going to set my snap back to start. And to smart, not start, I'm sorry. And get four bars here. You, you count it out here. It's one, two, three, four. That's how much of the sample we got uh, for a four bar uh, measure or you know, loop or whatever, whatever you call it. And, uh, and this is the important part here is I'm going to go to audio time stretch region to locators and 
takes a couple seconds here to process. And I'm going to set my metronome to see if I got it in the ballpark of the tempo. Now it's a little off beat, um, but that's that's totally fine. You can hear the artifacts too in the sample. You can hear that it's been time stretched because it was a little drastic. Um, if that tempo was down to maybe like 60 something, uh, you probably wouldn't even notice the, the time stretching. And in the mix, this would even sound really good. Put some reverb on that, some EQ. Um, it would sound really nice. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put a drum loop to this sample so to give you a better picture of how this will sound in a beat. Uh, so I'm gonna go to my drums. And uh, this is uh, Blue Water Breaks. Uh, I use a lot of these drums in my beats. Um, if you like these drums or you know a copy, I can send, send them to you. Uh, leave me a message in the inbox or you can leave a comment on the video and I can uh, sing you these breaks. Um, I'll probably use this one. For the sake of the video, this one's already been sort of pre-chopped, so it's already, I don't have to find the where the beat comes in at, etc., and chop it right. It's already kind of uh, chopped and looped perfectly, whoever did, whoever made this uh, Blue Water Breaks uh, kit or sound pack, whatever. And uh, all I need to do now is time stretch it to... Uh, this is a, basically a two-bar loop drums. I know that because I've, I've used it in a ton of different beats. And uh, so I'm going to time stretch it. It's one, two. You see the two bars there. And uh, it's time stretch region of locators. I might be going a little fast here if you're not familiar with all this. In that case, you can rewind and give me more views. Just kidding. Kinda, but uh, hopefully this sounds okay. But you know, again, this is a tutorial, so I'm just giving you a picture. Uh, a lot of what I do can be a lot more complicated than this, um, because I work with a lot of different samples and I'm pretty much a sampling type of producer. Until I get better on the piano and other instruments, I will be using a lot of samples. But anyways back to this beat. So I'm going to press play and we'll see how this sounds. Well, you know what? I totally suck at making beats. Okay, I put this here on the um, EXS24 channel and that doesn't play audio. Audio files. It plays whatever is in the EXS24 sampler. So let me drag this down to a to an audio insert there. Um, if I figure out how to edit videos, I will edit this part out of the video. If not, then you can forgive me. Uh, okay, here we go. Now I'm going to time stretch this. Region to locators. And I'm going to see how this sounds. around with a lot of different uh, things like I really try to obscure samples a lot so what I may do I may chop all of this up I'm pressing control to I mean command I'm sorry to, to get my scissor tool and I'm just gonna like mess around with this sample to like obscure it and uh, so people won't know it's a Barbra Streisand song or whatever and this might sound raggedy, but you know, just to give you an idea. And uh, you can like, and it's basically the same as using the EXS24 sampler. And this is also another thing you can do 
and logic if you press option you can drag this here and it just kind of copies it and uh, I'm not reinventing the wheel here or anything but you know in case you didn't know and like uh, I might slice this right here and loop it just when you go to the top of the audio file uh, it has this little loop icon you can just drag this put this hold you part I like that a lot so I'm gonna copy that here so I may like I may like even delete the rest of that and just like keep doing this hold you part or whatever and make a beat around that add some piano and uh, you know I usually like working with samples because it inspires me it gives me like uh, you know somewhere to go, and uh, and usually my beats come out sounding nothing like the original sample, and I think that's how sampling should be. You know, like I hear a lot of people sample, and uh, it just sounds so much like the original song, and it's like so like like a you know they're pretty much just kind of taking it and not really making anything of their own with it. You know, I mean I, sometimes it's fine. Like I seen Just Blaze totally take a song but he does something to it um, but anyways I'm not gonna preach to you all uh, I'm just gonna show you some more here like what I can what you can do with drums too like if you wanted to just you don't want that drum pattern you can take these snares here and say you just want that kick you just want to like loop this part here this might sound raggedy right now hold on See that you can make like some like really cool like drum like loops or whatever, and uh, just and then, and then you know if you have an issue with sampling drums like they won't even know that you kind of took their break you know what I'm saying because you just slicing the drums basically what you would do if you got like a drum kick where you slice the drums like you know but then again that that's time consuming like slicing samples up and put them in the EXS24 sampler. That was time consuming work where I've just kind of like did it here all within, you know, matter of minutes, you know, and, uh, you know, I heard what I wanted and kind of went for it. So you can like, you see, you see what I'm saying? Like, you know, it sounds kind of, you know, funky there, but, uh, you get the picture and, uh, so I'll probably do something with this. I like the sound of it, but, uh, basically that's how I sample. That's Logic's time stretching capabilities. If you have any other questions or whatever, feel free to leave comments there on the on the page here on uh, YouTube uh, and inbox me or whatever. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.